Just about a week ago, we had the final part of the installation done on this, our home integration system. It's a partnership between Ford and Sunrun and Delta. Delta made the equipment. Ford obviously makes the vehicles and Sunrun distributes and installs this system so that when the power goes out or there's a natural disaster, your Ford F-150 Lightning can power your house, meaning you can continue to use all of the appliances you would normally use in your house with some limitations, even if the mains power is out. Now, We've wanted one of these for a while because we live in a rural location. Our power goes out four or five times per season, and so it's really useful for us to have. However, as you may have noted in the last video we made on this subject, when this system had been finally installed on Thursday, and it's taken about three months of backwards and forwardsing for reasons that will become apparent if you watch that video, namely because we have a span system as well, we finally had the system supposedly finished on Thursday. It didn't work on Thursday. And then I made a video about how it didn't work. And then on Friday, the system miraculously worked. So I wanted to give you a bit of an update. Last night, we actually had a snowstorm. We had about three to four inches of snow fall. It's all pretty much melted now, but the power stayed on. And in order for me to demonstrate the Ford home integration system operating, I need to cause a fake power cut. Now to do that, I have to turn off power to the Ford Charge Station Pro while simultaneously flipping the brake that delivers power to our essential loads backed up panel. So let's do it and see if the truck is going to behave. Now, before I do that, I have left the truck on because when you have the truck on, there is a information screen that you can see in the truck that tells you exactly what's going on. So here we go. And this is going to be in real time. So three, two, one. I'm now going to take this camera inside and talk to you a little bit about how the system works. Everything in this panel is theoretically capable of being powered from the truck when the Ford home integration system runs. But to give it a bit of a fighting chance today, because we've had a few hit and miss situations where sometimes it's worked and sometimes it hasn't. I've turned off our well pump, which we don't need right now. And I've also turned off the, where is it? The main heat pump to the house. This is because although as I've proven a couple of times on Friday and then later uh, on Sunday, while the truck can power those systems, I find it tends to be a little bit more reliable if I turn those systems on one by one, giving the truck a little bit of a um, less stressful time to power up. So what's going to happen right now is the truck gets told by the Ford Charge Station Pro that there was an issue with the mains power system. And in order to make sure everything runs properly, there are some tests that are carried out. And then as you can see here, the power has just come on. So right now, the, the garage light is being powered by the truck. Now, to prove everything is working as it should, I'm going to leave this running. And if you look in the truck right now, it will tell you what the power drain is on the truck. And I'm not actually gonna open the door. Right now, the truck is providing 1.8 kilowatts to the house of a total theoretical power output of about 9.6 kilowatts. So now I'm going to turn that heat pump back on and hopefully that will provide power to the heat pump on the outside of the house and then our heat pump will also be operating. Why did I turn the heat pump off? Well, as I said, when I've tried this in the past, sometimes the heat pump running at the same time as everything else getting going has caused a few issues with the system. But I'm right out here at the back and you can see this is the server room heat pump and this is the heat pump for the rest of the house. The issue that we had last week seemed to stem from the fact that the home integration system didn't like when we had multiple things trying to pull high currents from the house in one go. I've actually helped it out today by turning off the server 
uh, for the transport evolved and I've turned off another couple of high loads in the house because I want to see if without the water pump running we can power everything else in the house and right now the answer is yes. On Friday when I tested the system we were able to also run a hot water heater so we were able to have hot water we were able to have the sewerage system working and everything else. Right now interestingly the truck is only pulling 1.7 kilowatts of 9.6 kilowatts maximum so it's not even breaking into a sweat 1.7 kilowatts of 9.6 kilowatts theoretical now i'm going to do something i've never done before and i'm going to turn the well pump on because i'm curious to see if we turn the well on whether that will cause the system to fail or whether the ford home integration system will quite happily work sunrun since we made the video has offered to come back and look at our system and see if there are any things that they can do to make sure that this system operates properly right now however all i can say is everything seems to be working we're now seeing 2.8 of 9.6 kilowatts of power running through the house system and everything seems to be operating so i guess in the event of a power cut one of the things we're going to have to be mindful of is whether we run our server room on that system or whether i just turn off the servers and find an alternative method of powering the house i'm going to go upstairs in a second and i'm going to turn on the servers and you'll see what the server room booting up does to our overall power drain. Forgive the wires but we've now just turned on the two servers responsible for Transport Evolved. They're now booting up and everything seems to be working appropriately. Something that Mr Ghost agrees. And in a little bit of a hat tip to Sean from Action Retro in his old days, I'm turning on the iMac Pro that I use every day on Transport Evolved. So far, so good. So now the system is operating as it should, let's take a look at what the charge station pro tells us on camera it probably looks like it's flashing really quickly but it's actually pulsing kind of gently a green pulse to indicate that power is coming from the truck going through to the inverter and then to the house now just as a reminder everything is currently on and operational let's have a look and see what that's done to the load in the truck As you can see at this time of day it's 3.8 of 9.6 kilowatts which is great because it means that the truck is powering the home and there's no major issues. This truck wasn't fully charged when I started this experiment in fact it was driven to the other side of Portland and back so probably at about 55-60 miles this morning because I had a dental procedure which is possibly why my mouth still feels quite numb and my brain is not fully functioning but nevertheless everything is working fine the other indication we get that the truck is transferring power to the house is that the charge door here has a charge indicator right here normally it's blue when it's charging it's white if it's not charging and when it's transferring power back to the house it turns green the other cool thing to note is that right here we have an estimation of how long we can power the house based on its current load. This house is pretty high demand. It's low right now, it's about half of the truck's physical capacity, but when it's first thing in the morning and we've got a water heater operating, this can be right up to eight kilowatts. And it says right now, if we continue to use power at this rate, we'll have about 19 hours of backup power available. Now for most people who have a Ford F-150 Lightning and a home integration system, their truck should be capable of powering their home for up to three days if you ration power. And normally we would ration power if we knew that we weren't going to get power for a substantial amount of time, we would turn things off. But right now, for example, it's just above freezing outside and so the heat pumps are operating full pelt. In an ideal world, this would 
handle everything and it would take the heat energy out of the server closet and distribute it around the house. Unfortunately though, a system like that is kind of expensive and a bit of an overkill for our house. It's also more expensive to service. And because we have a server room that our business relies on, having a dedicated server room cooling system that we can just rely on to keep things at a constant temperature is actually, well, it provides us with a little bit more redundancy because on a bad day, in a bad worst case scenario, we can just open the door to the server closet and hopefully this one can provide some backup cooling. So what can I say after a few successful attempts with the Ford Charge Station Pro and home integration setup? Would I recommend it? Again, at this point, probably not because it's worked three out of five attempts for me, which is not the best in terms of probability, but I am finally understanding why it didn't work. So the two times it failed, on one occasion, I suspect the truck just had an error and didn't want to talk to the system. And in the second instance, it was first thing in the morning and we have one of those kettles that auto magically keeps the water hot. So if you leave it for any length of time and you accidentally hit the reboil button, it will just periodically reboil. It's wasteful, it's energy inefficient. And when you're running a system like this, having the kettle just suddenly come on when there's already high current loads going through the truck, it caused issues. Long term, could we survive in a power cut with this? The answer is absolutely. We would turn off the, the heat pump as I did to show you here. I would turn off a couple of high current loads and make sure that the truck is running and the system is running happily and then slowly re-add those loads in. We do have battery backup systems UPS is basically for our server closet and for the edit computers in the Transport Evolved office. My wife also has one on her computer that she uses for work. So in the event that we do have a power cut, we would make sure that we turned all our computers off as long as we were awake, obviously. If we weren't, hopefully the computers would be turned off anyway. I do sometimes have to leave mine running at night if I'm doing a render or something. But we'd make sure all those computers were turned off to lessen the load on the system. I'd make sure that the water heater wasn't operating because that water heater can really add a lot of electricity demand to the home integration system and put quite a lot of strain on it. And then I'd slowly just add those loads back in. Right now, the well pump is operating off this system. We've got the heat pumps operating off this system. The only things we don't have powered off the, the, the truck right now is none of the non-Ford charging stations. Obviously, this one is not drawing power from the grid and charging the truck. It's doing it the other way around. So it has to be on that backed up circuit. But all of our other charging stations, and we've got three of them, we've got two juice box pros that share a 50 amp connection. And then we have a, um, a span charging station that again uh, has a, I think a 40 or 50 amp feed to it. They are not backed up, but in the event of a power cut, if we absolutely desperately needed to charge another vehicle off this truck, we'd just do it from the 30 amp outlet in the bed. But the fact is that right now we're pulling less than 10 kilowatts and we're actually pulling a decent amount of power from this truck to power the house. And right now it's doing a great job. So the stove is not powered off this system because if the power goes off, we don't need to use the stove. We don't have the dryer circuit on here either because the dryer doesn't need to be powered. If there's a power cut, we've got other concerns other than keeping our clothes dry. The important thing is that we can get water out of the ground. We can flush the toilets. We can run some emergency communications equipment. We don't have to keep all of the servers running, but you know, if there was an earthquake, we could keep our Starlink running or our local internet connection running. We could keep warm. We could even just have a heater on in one room and this system would quite happily be able to do that. And that was really, at the end of the day, that was our goal for this. Would I like a more powerful system? Yeah, I would pay more to get like a 20 kilowatt backup system that was maybe a little bit more robust. It's early days of this system, so I do expect there to be some bleeding edge issues. But again, until those bleeding edge issues have been ironed out, until this is working 100% reliably, which I still don't feel it is, although while I've been filming this, it's been operating just fine. 
I think it's probably best not to have one of these systems put in and not pay the nine and a half thousand dollars that it costs unless you are someone who is cognizant and accepting that things might go wrong and that's basically where we were at anyway we will keep you up to date with this i want to thank sunrun and ford for helping us try and bug fix this i don't know what happened but overnight on thursday after i made that original video it wasn't working and then the Friday morning it was. It worked Friday, it worked over the weekend. We had a couple of failures, one yesterday, one this morning when I tried to film this update and now it's working again. So who knows? I did take the truck for a drive between the two failed attempts and then now. So maybe it was the truck, maybe the truck had an issue. It's still trying to download that blinking software update that nobody can get working on the truck. So maybe it was the truck's fault. Anyway, that is it with today's video. If you liked it, you know what to do and feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments section is open for your thoughts as is our Discord server. There is a link below. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links to regularly support us with a Patreon membership or a YouTube subscription. You'll also find links to our Kofi Bitcoin and Swag store and do check us out on Mastodon. There are links now. We've gone back and added them to all of our videos. A lot of you said there weren't any links to Mastodon. We've made sure that they are now there. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters. Mike Weeder, Tony Moss, Linda Irish, Sean Tucker, Patrick Boyarski, Paul Nelson, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mura Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tesla in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, and I can't do the rest of it because the battery has just died. <laughs> so I'm just going to let the, the GoPro footage in the truck play out. Scrolling on the truck's right is our list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters. They are Mike Weeder, Tony Moss, Linda Iris, Sean Tucker, Patrick Boyarski, Paul Nelson, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mora Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazlet in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Ascentar and Jim Burness. Finally, out of this world, thanks to our Starman level supporters, Robert Flannery, CPU Freak 101, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burbridge, Dave Kitchen, Aaron Hahn, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and Ian. I will be back soon with more videos, as will the rest of the team. Not the truck, which is stealing the show right now. Good on you, Adir Rattel. Anyway, until next time, as always, keep evolving. And just so that you know what it looks like when I switch back onto the main power, here we go. Three, two, one. Hopefully, there you go. The power system has finished and the truck will go back to charging itself. That's pretty cool, right?